A welcome back now. Financial inclusion in Nigeria has had undeniable successes, with the onboarding of residents to the banking sector consistently progressing. But overall, exclusion rates continue to exceed official targets, not least uh, due to low financial literacy. Going forward, Nigeria's financial inclusion strategy should more systematically leverage rapidly developing digital instruments. Uh, let's take this feature from the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents in Nigeria, Amber. The impact of mobile money and agency banking hit a crescendo in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown, with active point-of-sale terminals used by merchants for financial transactions, recording about 3.1 trillion naira in the second quarter of 2021. The increase in the value of POS transactions in Nigeria shows the spending patterns of Nigerians and payment preferences, reaching all new concrete and, by extension, deepening the nation's financial inclusion drive. However, there have been complaints of proliferation of agents, lack of KYC to even issues of theft and other fraudulent activities. The Yamban executive spoke of a tax force for self-regulation while clarifying other gray areas. Just take one of the case studies. I mean, part of the framework of the CBN is that a mobile money or bank agent should be in a brick and mortar location, like an address that is traceable. But what we have today are agents under umbrellas, trees. We have agents who are walking this terminal. Rising from our fifth Amber Annual National Conference held in Abuja last year. One of the resolutions that came out of our robust deliberations with all critical stakeholders was to begin self-regulation using our tax force. Victor Olojo lamented that the members are often on the receiving end when it came to counterfeited bills and other fraudulent activities, making a renewed call for radicate trading. There was a robbery case that happened in the East and um, somebody's phone was snatched and those um, you know, um, bad guys came to Lagos, they took the SIM and transferred the funds to an agent. You know, and the agent innocently actually served that customer, not knowing that that customer is actually you know, um, an arm robber. What we find out now is that those merchants now turn the outlet to mobile money media outlets. And that's not what the POS is really meant for. And those that give out the POS know that this is what's going on. But they do not query them because what they want, they want money. The growth in the number of POS businesses in the country has formed a major source of employment for Nigerians, especially the youths. <laughs> Welcome back from that particular feature, which is actually on deepening the financial inclusion policy of the federal government of Nigeria. Well, moving on now, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, LCCI, has stated that the removal of fuel subsidy will save the Nigerian economy over 3 trillion naira annually, explaining that it is one of the best economic decisions to curb the nation's unsustainable debt. Now, President of the LCCI, Dr. Michael Olawali Cole, uh, made a session in a statement of the state of the economy yesterday. Uh, Deputy President of LCCI, Gabriel Idahosa, joins me now to give more insight on the development issue. Many thanks for joining us, Mr. Gabriel Idahosa. Thank you. All right, let's start uh, this way, Gabriel. Your chamber has raised concerns over the $800 million loan the federal government has secured to cushion the effect of fuel subsidy removal on poor Nigerians. What are the issues, really? Well, the essential issue was that if, if we're going to raise money at all, to address uh, the palliatives required from removing the subsidy, then the fund should be for that purpose. But if we take a $800 million loan, and we are going to distribute it to 50 million Nigerians selected by some means for six months, that does not address the impacts of the removal of the subsidy on 200 million Nigerians. So really that's, that's the summary of the issues about that loan. So there's first of all, the size of the loan, the need for the loan, 
and the impacts. If the palliative not impact 200 million Nigerians, then it doesn't address the objective. And then do we need to add another $800 million uh, on top of our already well-known bloated debt uh, exposure, both local and foreign? So the, these are all the issues around it. So our feeling is that first you want to look at what are the palliatives that are needed. Removal of subsidy affects the price of petrol. So what actions are we going to take to deal with that? One of the comments we made during the conference yesterday was that if we are borrowing to convert all vehicles that currently use petrol to gas, which is available and cheaper, then we are addressing the issue of the removal of subsidy. If we are saying cost subsidies is going to be removed, the price of petrol is going to rise, there will be more inflation, and we want to give relief to all Nigerians, not just 50 million selected Nigerians, then we want to take actions that affect all Nigerians. For example, take out school fees for secondary and uh, tertiary education and say, because we are removing subsidy, across the board, all Nigerians in public schools, we are taking out at least two share and perhaps a large part of, of the uh, of the hostel for all Nigerians. All right. So we want to look at actions that will be of direct benefit to all Nigerians. To all Nigerians. A selected group, whichever science we are going to use to select. Okay. So all, those all are right. the key issues. If I have to bolt in now, Gabriel, if I have to bolt in now, uh, according to the statement you released yesterday, uh, let me just um, quote uh, your president verbatim. He said, the removal of your subsidy is among others expected to spur investment in domestic refining and petrochemicals and create a significant value chain you know, for uh, the various stakeholders. I want you to throw more light on that because uh, you're looking at um, 3 trillion naira to be uh, gotten out of um, the removal. How possible is this? Well, first of all, the reason why we don't have several refineries in Nigeria as far back as 30 years ago was simply because we held on to the subsidy regime that says that if you produce white petroleum products, petrol, diesel, at your own cost, with your own investment, you must sell it at a predetermined price by government because we want to subsidize. There's no investor in the world that will do that. The investor must cover the cost of producing the petrol and the profit element for the shareholders and the lenders that finance the refinery. So if you now remove the subsidiary, the, 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 the refiner, the, the, so the fuel subsidy, then you are saying to investors, the way is open for you to invest in that sector of Nigerian economy. You can come in and build refineries and you can sell some in Nigeria because you will sell at market price and you can also export. Mm. If we did that 10 years ago, clearly Nigeria will be the center for petroleum refining and petrochemicals in the whole of West and Central Africa. We would actually be something like the, the Houston and Louisiana of America, where you have several, practically 20, 30, 40 refineries all lined up along the, 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 the oil belts. So the investors are willing to invest, not just for petrol, but for petrochemicals and other products that come from a typical petroleum refining and petrochemical plants. They are willing and able because the market is there. The 200 people of Nigeria, Nigerians are still there and probably many more will be born. But if we don't remove the subsidy, you cannot make a business case for anyone to build refineries in Nigeria. All right. So the only people that have built refineries are oh. those who are taking one, a faith that the, the petroleum uh, subsidy is removed at some point. Second, they are probably going to export all the most of the refined, product, refined products, so long as we keep uh, subsidy, uh, subsidy, subsidy regime. All right, uh, Gabriel, uh, from your statement, uh, though the planned removal of fuel subsidies may cause uh, forward um, 
upward movement of inflation in the short term. Uh, the LCG, I believe, is arguably one of the best economic decisions to reduce unsustainable debts and widespread corruption in the sector. But my question right now is that you said that if government is, has to do uh, palliative measures, it has to affect the entire Nigeria. But what inflationary curbs should be put in place, really, aside from the last time they talked about um, bringing um, transport, uh, you know, various um, buses, you know, to help cushion the effect of um, high cost of transportation. But what measure should they be looking at in the short run to curb the, this issue of inflation that may uh, rise from this um, new policy? Well, in the short run, you cannot move the inflation because the transporters are going to increase their prices, that will translate into prices of products. So that is certain. What we want to do, and what has been advocated, is to now say, if we are going to suffer inflation in certain aspects of the economy during that transition period, what can we do to cushion that effect? And that's why we talked about looking at all the other major items, the typical family expenditure. So if, 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 if school fees is taken out of me, for example, from a family, if public transportation is massively increased, so there are cities like Lagos that have invested in 1,000, 2,000 buses within a very short period. And during COVID, this country and several countries proved that you can do certain things in a very short time. So if the government says, because we are removing subsidies, some of the money saved should be put into a massive provision of a very large number of public transportation solutions, starting with buses and boats in the red parent area. Not just 500, 1,000 there, but a very massive investment of a lot of that three, four trillion okay. that we are saving in a massive production and import local assembly of buses in very, very large numbers. That can be done. All right. COVID has taught us that the country that is determined to address mm. a major issue, if we take it as a major issue and yeah. say we need to produce whatever number, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 buses mm. to massively address the immediate expected rise in transport costs. Okay, but, but looking, 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 looking at it some other way now, Gabriel, because uh, if you look at it, there are, there are other social economic implications. You know, what should government do about that, specifically with unemployment rate at an at a unwholesome rate of about forty percent? Because with this policy, I'm sure that might even rise. Forty percent of what? Unemployment rate is at about. 40% as we speak. So what should government be doing about the social economic implications aside from uh, providing uh, mass transit transport? What should they be doing? Because uh, a school of thought believes that this policy might actually increase the rate of unemployment in the country. Well, the un unemployment is created by several factors. So removal of subsidy will be one of them that will in cause inflation. And that is why some of these suggestions are meant to massively create employment. For example, if you start to convert all cars, particularly commercial vehicles, from petrol to gas, that will create a massive amount of employment. The people in the industry will tell you the numbers. If you want to bring very, very large numbers of CKDs, completely up down parts of buses, and assemble them in the existing assembly plants we have across the country, that will create a large number of jobs. Those two activities will create a value chain, an additional value chain of more jobs that are going to be created because the, the, the huge activities of a massive assembly of buses, we, not all the parts of the buses will come in. The, the current assembly plants we have in Nigeria in, use some local produce parts. So you are going to create employment from the massive rollout of construction of assembly of buses, of the conversion from petrol to gas. We have the gas. We have a few uh, plants for conversion and a massive employment will be generated just from those two things and the value chain. So 
there will be some amount of unemployment triggered by All right. the, All right. the removal of subsidy because some businesses may find costs of business too high okay. to continue to operate. All right, but Gabriel. the fact that you are, you are going to generate a lot of employment by taking the actions that are related mm. to replacing the removal of subsidy. All right, as we begin to round off on this particular discourse, now I really want to get uh, more clarification now because at um, your meeting yesterday, you also emphasized that, that um, the PIA, which is the Petroleum Industry Act, should actually be implemented. I just want you to throw more light on that uh, as regards uh, the removal of fuel subsidy for just about a minute as we round off with you. A lot of the PIA have been implemented. You have seen the new... Uh, NNPC, that's a very important part of it. The new agencies have been in place. I think the, the PIA itself expected that fuel subsidy will be removed at the same time as all those other actions that were taken. So what the LCCI is saying that we should implement the PIA in full. We shouldn't have suspended removal of subsidy for 18 months. And in fact, we should try to do it now. This government should not leave that very important uh, decision to the new government. But it appears the, the, the government has decided that the new government will do it. That's the point we are making, that an essential part of the PIA was not implemented at the time it was done. All right, then. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gabriel Idahosa, Deputy uh, President of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We do appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, there's still much to expect from Business Insight. In a moment, we'll be looking at the rail transport sector when we come back from this quick break. Do join us again.